Orders concerning the tabernacle. BC 1491. 1 And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together, and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord hath commanded, that ye should do them. 2 Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord, whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. 3 Ye shall kindle no fear throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. 4 And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, 5 Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord, whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it, an offering of the Lord, gold, and silver, and brass, six and blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine linen, and goat's hair seven and ram's skins dyed red, and badger's skins, and shittim wood, eight and oil for the light, and spices for anointing oil, and for the sweet incense, nine and onyx stones, and stones to be set for the effort, and for the breastplate. Ten and every wise-hearted among you shall come, and may call that the Lord hath commanded, eleven the tabernacle, his tent, and his covering, his tashes, and his boards, his bars, his pillars, and his sockets, twelve the ark, and the staves thereof, with the mercy seat, and the veil of the covering, thirteen the table, and his staves, and all his vessels, and the showbread, fourteen the candlestick also for the light, and his furniture, and his lamps, with the oil for the light, fifteen and the incense altar, and his staves, and the anointing oil, and the sweet incense, and the hanging for the door at the entering in of the tabernacle, sixteen the altar of burnt offering, with his brazen grate, his staves, and all his vessels, the lava and his foot, seventeen the hangings of the court, his pillars, and their sockets, and the hanging for the door of the court, eighteen the pins of the tabernacle, and the pins of the court, and their cords, nineteen the cloths of service to do service in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons, to minister in the priest's office. It was said in general, chapter 34. 32, Moses gave them in commandment all that the Lord has spoken with him. But, the erecting and furnishing of the tabernacle being the work to which they were now immediately to apply themselves. There is particular mention of the orders given concerning it. 1. All the congregation is summoned to attend, verse 1, that is, the heads and rulers of the congregation, the representatives of the several tribes, who must receive instructions from Moses as he had received them from the Lord, and must communicate them to the people. Thus John, being commanded to write to the seven churches what had been revealed to him writes it to the angels, or ministers, of the churches. 2. Moses gave them in charge all that, and that only, which God had commanded him, thus he approved himself faithful both to God and Israel, between whom he was a messenger or mediator. If he had added, altered, or diminished, he would have been false to both. But, both sides having reposed a trust in him, he was true to the trust, yet he was faithful as a servant only, but Christ as a son, Hebrews 3, 5, 6, 3. He begins with the law of the Sabbath, because that was much insisted on in the instructions he had received, verse 2, 3, six days shall work be done, work for the tabernacle, the work of the day that was now to be done in its day, and they had little else to do here in the wilderness where they had neither husbandry nor merchandise, neither food to get nor clothes to make, but on the seventh day you must not strike a stroke, no, not at the tabernacle, work, the honour of the Sabbath was above that of the sanctuary, more ancient and more lasting, that must be to you a holy day, devoted to God, and not be spent in common business. It is a Sabbath of rest, it is a Sabbath of Sabbaths, so some read it, more honourable and excellent than any of the other feasts, 
and should survive them all. A Sabbath of Sabbatism, so others read it, being typical of that Sabbatism or rest, both spiritual and eternal, which remains for the people of God. Hebrews 4. 9. It is a Sabbath of rest, that is, in which a rest from all worldly labor must be very carefully and strictly observed. It is a Sabbath and a little Sabbath, so some of the Jews would have it read, not only observing the whole day as a Sabbath, but an hour before the beginning of it, and an hour after the ending of it, which they throw in over and above out of their own time, and call a little Sabbath, to show how glad they are of the approach of the Sabbath and how loath to part with it. It is a Sabbath of rest, but it is rest to the Lord, to whose honor it must be devoted. A penalty is here annexed to the breach of it, whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Also a particular prohibition of kindling fires on the Sabbath day for any servile work, as smith's work, or plumber's, etc. 4. He orders preparation to be made for the setting up of the tabernacle. Two things were to be done, 1. All that were able must contribute, take you from among you an offering, verse 5. The tabernacle was to be dedicated to the honor of God, and used in his service and therefore what was brought for the setting up and furnishing of that was an offering to the Lord. Our goodness extends not to God, but what is laid out for the support of his kingdom and interest among men he is pleased to accept as an offering to himself, and he requires such acknowledgments of our receiving our all from him and such instances of our dedicating our all to him. The rule is, whosoever is of a willing heart let him bring. It was not to be a tax imposed upon them, but a benevolence or voluntary contribution, to intimate to us, 1, that God has not made our yoke heavy. He is a prince that does not burden his subjects with taxes, nor make them to serve with an offering, but draws with the cords of a man, and leaves it to ourselves to judge what is right, his is a government that there is no cause to complain of, for he does not rule with rigor. 2. That God loves a cheerful giver, and is best pleased with the free, will offering. Those services are acceptable to him that come from the willing heart of a willing people, Psalms 110. 3. 2. All that was skillful must work, every wise, hearted among you shall come, and make. Verse 10. See how God dispenses his gifts variously, and, as every man hath received the gift, so he must minister, 1 Peter 4. 10. Those that were rich must bring in materials to work on, those that were ingenious must serve the tabernacle with their ingenuity, as they needed one another, so the tabernacle needed them both, 1 Corinthians 12. 7-21. The work was likely to go on when some helped with their purses, others with their hands and both with a willing heart, Moses, as he had told them what must be given, verse 5 to 9, so he gives them the general heads of what must be made, verse 11 to 19, that, seeing how much work was before them, they might apply themselves to it the more vigorously, and every hand might be busy, and it gave them such an idea of the fabric design that they could not but long to see it finished.